I got to share this testimony with you. And this is a real life, honest, truthful um, occurrence that happened to me. And going back to the year 2022 in Long Beach, California, we had a gift gathering and concert. What GIFT means, G-I-F-T, it's an acronym that means the gathering of Israelite families together, GIFT. And it was in Long Beach and I attended this function, this gathering of the Israelites in Southern California. There was a lot of groups there. But one thing stood out, I, um, I purchased a staff. Um, at this concert, they had some vendors selling different things that were there from um, fringes, shirts, T-shirts, and one vendor was selling staffs like a walking stick or a staff that Moses or our people have been accustomed to using. Anyway, when I was there, I was drawn to this particular staff while I was there, and it had all of the children of Israel, all the sons of Israel, of Jacob, that were listed on this, and it also had it in um, Paleo-Hebrew inscription on the staff. It was nice and varnished. It was pretty tall. It was over five feet tall. Um, I'm six foot three. So anyway, um, I purchased this staff after I was attracted to it and nothing was out of the ordinary. I finally got a staff. And so after attending the concert and fast forward now to 2024, um, when I got back from Brazil in 2023, I hadn't used my staff and I had left it at home and said, man, I wish I would have taken it to Brazil with me. And I started to exercise by going on two or three mile walks and um, slight jogging. And I would take my staff with me um, when I was back home in 2023 and 2024 and to ward off any dogs or anything like that when I'm out in the neighborhood walking. I used to take a golf club, but the staff, I said, yeah, I'm going to start taking my staff with me. Anyway, it was time for me to return back to Brazil in July 2024, and I had decided this time I was going to take my staff with me. So I was going to be in Brazil for six months. Um, again, at least six months. And I said, I wanted to have the staff with me, but when I'm traveling for so long of a time, I already have two check bags that I can check. And I have two carry-ons that comes with the flight, the purchase of the ticket. So I had to purchase another um, container to take the staff in. So that brought a problem, right? Because when I checked online with United Airlines and with the other airlines in Brazil, they would only allow um, bags or staff a walking stick. It can be no longer than um, five feet tall to take onto the plane. So I couldn't take it on the plane, so I had to take it as check baggage. So um, I say, okay, I can work with that. What I can do is go online and and I looked on United and saw that, you know, there are certain bags that are irregular shapes for golf clubs, for hockey sticks, all type of different sports paraphernalia. So um, it was acceptable to do that as another piece of check baggage that would cost me an additional fee. So I decided to go ahead and pay the fee, but um, after measuring the stick, I knew that I had to get a um, irregular um, 
um, container to take it in. So I went on Amazon and looked for something to take this, the, the staff in. And again, it's over five feet tall. Um, and the only thing that I can find that was affordable was a umbrella um, container or bag that is it's rectangular in shape and it was um it was two inches longer than my um staff so i say that'd be perfect and you know the when i say umbrella i'm talking about the outside patio umbrellas they have a special bag when you want to store it you can take that umbrella off and you can put it into this bag and zip it up and you can store it so i say great and so I ordered on Amazon and it came a day or two later. And when I, when it arrived, I say, perfect. And now I just need to pad it so it doesn't get broken um, when I'm dry, when I'm flying to Brazil, when the bag, baggage handlers are handling it. So I had this exercise mat, you know, the ones that you roll out. That's like a, a nice soft foam that you do push-ups or sit-ups or whatever exercise on the floor. I had purchased one of those that I'd never used about two months earlier. I said, ah, that'd be perfect because in the middle it's an open space, like a toilet roll. If you can imagine a toilet roll, toilet tissue roll with a little round circle in the middle. Um, so I can slide the staff inside that circle and it fit just perfectly inside it. And I said, this will give it extra padding in the middle so that it will not break. And so I also decided to put other things, since I can have a limit of weight on this bag, up to 50 pounds, since I paid for it, I said, I might as well take more stuff and use it to pad like socks and other items um, that are more rigid um, inside there. Anyway, I packed it nice and secure and off to the airport I go, LAX. So I went to LAX, I flew out of LAX. Um, it was no problem with checking the bag. Um, they said, oh, no problem. We knew you were bringing it because you had purchased it, purchased it online. And so everything went well at the airport. I got to Houston from LAX. From Houston, I flew into Sao Paulo, which is in South Brazil. And when I had got there, I had a six-hour layover. So I got my bags, went through customs. Everything went well. And... I took a flight to my final destination after my long wait in Brazil or in Sao Paulo, which was my last stop. And we took an Uber or a taxi because a taxi that they had there, they had a minivan type thing where I could definitely put all of my bags and that long irregular package that had my staff in it. So we were happy to see one another. When we got to uh, my apartment, I started to unpack and I wanted to um, put away some of the things. And as um, we unzipped the zipper of the, the bag with the staff in it, I reached in there and I grabbed it from the, the small end because it's a staff that at the foot of it, the part that goes to the ground, it's thin. And as it goes up to the top, it gets thicker and thicker. And the thickest part is at the top of the staff. Okay, so I pull the thin end out um, from the, um, the padding, the exercise mat that I had. And when I got, when I pulled it out, I saw that the staff was broken. It wasn't broken in the thin part. It was not broken in the middle part. It was broken at the top, um, the thickest part of the staff, which the first emotion I felt was anger and frustration that how could they break my staff? 
And I looked at my wife and she looked at me with the face like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I just put it down and turned away and came into the bedroom to gather myself. Now, this is unusual for me. And I'm going to pause right here and let you know why it's unusual. And then I get back to the story. Before, I had recognized a problem in myself and my spiritual walk. And that problem during self-examination was that I often let myself become frustrated, angry, and mad, and stressed all the time. Well, not all the time, but just on occasions, like few times a week, when almost every day sometimes. And I saw that as a flaw because I would say to myself, Yahar, how could you let yourself, if you have faith, how can you have fear? If you have stress, how can you have comfort? If you have anger, how can you have joy? How can both of these exist in the same vessel? And so I thought that was a flaw, like I said before, because I felt I should be operating in joy, in comfort, and in faith a lot more than I operate in fear, stress, and anger, right? So I actually prayed to the Father months ago before this happened because it was happening a lot to me at work and especially at home dealing with my daughter and the tenants that I have there and just everyday things in life. So I asked the Father to please help me and I was going to make conscious efforts to rely upon the Father whenever I can and then not to let fear and anger and stress dominate me for long periods of time. My ideal situation was letting it operate in me if it came to be very quick and I will be conscious of it and I'll make a conscious decision to change my thought processes where I can revert back to joy, to faith, and to comfort, right? So I had tried this before this situation had happened, before I got on a plane, different situations at home, and I consciously thought about it, I prayed, and then I went that it was so minimal, the stress, the negative emotions, I'll put it that way, the negative emotions were so minimal, and I felt that I was gaining ground. Now, back to the story of the broken staff. Now, when I, after I saw it was broken, and I immediately felt that anger and frustration, and so I then removed myself from it, came into the room, and laid on the bed, and just... I wasn't in prayer. The spirit just, something hit me in my spirit and said, Ezekiel, now it's not a voice. This is just a thought in my spirit. Ezekiel 37. And then at that moment, when I was thinking Ezekiel 37, and again, I had removed myself and now the most high was possibly giving me a response acknowledging that I was putting forth effort to rely upon him. So when I thought Ezekiel 37, immediately my eyes opened wide and my heart just started bumping. And I was thinking, don't, I didn't say don't. I said, if that staff is broken, where I think it's broken, this is something else. 
My heart was just pumping. Now, if you know Ezekiel 37, it has, it has words in it that pertains to this. And so before I got up, I kind of prayed quickly saying, Father, if it's broken where I'm thinking it's broken, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And this joy just came into me. This comfort just came over me at that moment. And I'm going to read that Ezekiel 37 part that I'm speaking about. And it says, this is Ezekiel 37, verse 15. I'm going to start at, and I'm going to go to 17. It says in Ezekiel 37, 15, the word of Yahweh came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah. And for the children of Israel, his companions, that means the other tribes that were with Judah in the southern kingdom, then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, meaning Ephraim is the northern tribe and the other tribes are those companions. Verse 17, and join them one to another and to one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. That's Ezekiel 37, 15 through 17. So that was what was going in my spirit when I laid down and that came to my mind was Ezekiel 37 about the stick. And I was wondering, and I walked immediately and was thinking in my spirit, if that stick is broken in that part between the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom, this is a wonderful event. When I walked into the room, turned on the light, I looked and the first tribe was Judah on the stick, listed on the stick. The second tribe was Levi. No, Benjamin, Benjamin. The third one was Levi. And the fourth one was Ephraim. And that is where the break in the staff was in the stick. And I scream, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because you got to think about something. I did never knew the order of the tribes on that stick. I just knew the 12 were there and it was also written in paleo. I didn't know whoever made that stick would position them where Judah would be on top, Benjamin would be second, Levi would be third, and Ephraim would be fourth, and Manasseh would be fifth, and so on and so forth for the rest of the tribes. I don't know that order. I would think that someone would probably order them as they were born, meaning... Reuben would have been first, Simeon would have been second, Levi would have been third, Judah would have been fourth, and so on. But that wasn't the way they were put on the stick. I don't know who made the stick or the staff. I purchased it a couple of years ago from a Hebrew gathering. But it was broken in that part, in that section. Now, what's the significance that I gathered from this at that very moment after feeling so much joy? I didn't mind the stake being broke. 
Now follow me on this. This is why I don't mind. Because I prayed to have faith, to have comfort, and not stress, and have faith and not fear. I had prayed this, and I look at this, that it was so valuable to me, this staff. It wasn't like an idol to me, not even close. It was just something I wanted to enjoy. And when I was here, as soon as I got here and pulled it out, it was broken. This is why it mattered, is because just like the tribes of Israel, the breaking of the, 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 the nation of Israel into two different kingdoms. And we know those who read Ezekiel and the rest of the scriptures know that the northern kingdom, especially this chapter, will be restored in, in the Most High's hand. As verse 17 says, and join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one in thine hand. So that is restoration. That is restoring back to the original and the most High has promised it. So if he can do that and all the agony that the, the kingdoms went through fighting and killing each other, hating one another, they can be restored as one nation back into his hand. Now, I'm not seeing myself as the most high in this at all. Far from it. What I'm seeing is that if the most high can restore and see things being restored to the original, then why can't I, on a smaller scale, a much, much, much smaller scale, see that staff being restored? And it took this to, to build my faith, to build my joy and my comfort. So that is the testimony that's a testimony of the broken staff. And the way it's broken, I sent photos. It's, it's like someone, when they broke it, it had to be unintentional, right? It had to be where at a certain angle a force that was pushed against the ground that would cause it to break on the thick end. But what caused it to break? Right at Ephraim. <laughs> That's where it broke. Levi was intact. I sent photos and I showed where Ephraim was broken. An amazing thing is the way wood breaks like this it's, it's in a way where I can just put wood glue and I can push it straight back into place. And guess what? It will be restored. And the biggest lesson I can get from that is no matter what. Was it a, another test the Most High sending me to see if I'm really going to keep giving effort to have faith? I think it was. And that's going to help me when something else more pressing, more big, more profound than this will be, prayerfully, this will help me to operate in that faith and in that comfort zone of the Most High. So I hope this benefits someone. I know it is still touching me today. And if you saw the photos of everything, it might hit you in a different way when you see what I'm speaking about. But all blessings to you and all praise and honor and glory go to the Most High Yahweh. By Shem Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. All praises Barakatha. Shalom, Shalom.
This is the word of the Lord of hosts. I took you from the pastures and from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone and have destroyed all the enemies in your path. I will make you a great name among the great ones of the earth. I will assign a place for my people in Israel. There I will plant them and they shall dwell in their own land. 